going to be talking about the chi-squared or chi-squared test, depending on the pronunciation. There are two types. There's a one variable and a two variable one. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the one variable test. It's also called the goodness of fit. So this is a form of hypothesis testing whereby you have some expectation about things, you know, in a society or in an experiment, and you want to test if that expectation is true. So that expectation could be based on the natural, uh, the nature, or some statistic that was given, and you want to test if that statistic is really true, if you actually did the experiment, right? So here's an example. A survey is conducted to find out car preferences among people. The expected proportions for car preferences in the, in the group are as follows. You have 43% of people preferred Toyota, 26% preferred BMW, 20% preferred Mazda, 11% preferred Chevrolet. So what they did is, after serving 400 people, the following results were obtained. So just before we move on, here you have those uh, percentages that are expected. So this could be based on some claim or some data on the internet that tells you that. And you really actually want to find out if that is true. So to do that, they took 400 people and actually find out what they preferred and wrote it down. Among those four cars, they wrote down what the people would have said. So they surveyed 400 people to actually find out if the distribution would be 43%, 26%, etc. So that's the whole point of this test. Anyway, so the actual values that, that they got, which we call the observed values, they got 117 people preferred the Toyota, 87 BMW, and so on. So those are the results. And the question is, is there enough evidence from those results to suggest that color preferences differ from the expected proportions, the expected at the 43%, the 26%, that's what you expect, right? That's the statistic that you expected before the experiment. So you're asking, is there any significant um, evidence that the expected proportions are different from the observed, right? So you want to test if really people, 43% of people will prefer the Toyota. You want to test that and to see if that has some statistical significance. So this is the formula you will, for the chi-square test. You have x squared. It's also called the x squared test. x squared equals sum of observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So that's the main formula for this, right? But when you're answering a question like this in college, you have to kind of follow a series of steps to get the full marks for that question, right? So the first step is you write H0 and H1, which are the new hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, respectively. So the new hypothesis, which is the status quo or the negative thing or the thing you want to test against. So here, the new hypothesis is just, I wrote it in shorthand here, where PT means the probability of Toyota PB is the probability of BMW, PM is the probability of Mazda, PC is the probability of Chevrolet, and I'm saying the probability or proportions of those are 43%, 26, da da da, etc. So the new hypothesis is the thing I expect, and I want to find out really, I'm trying to test against that, right? So that's always the new hypothesis, and the alternative is simply what I expect is wrong, or H0 is wrong, or H0 is false, whatever words that kind of counter H0 are accepted here. So you have those, generally, if this is in college, it will have marks for H, writing H0, marks for writing H1. This is done at the start. So this is your hypothesis, and then now you go and actually test it. Again, that's the question there, and we're trying to test, is there a statistical significance between what was found the results there, the 117, and what we expect, the 43%, etc. So what you do is you formulate a table and you fill it up. So the table we have these columns here. It will have the four columns for each car type. So it have the Toyota, it have the BMW, the Mazda, and Chevrolet, and then it will have two rows. So one row is for the observed values, and then another row is for the expected values. So the observed values here, where did I find them? These are values that you actually observe. These are real. 
values you actually seen this observed so these are values that you actually found out in an experiment in the survey you observed this so those are these values that you're given so observed values are always the values you're given the expected you always have to calculate that from statistics or you know from general knowledge you, have to, you always have to fabricate them they're not real it's things you expect right so that's another way to remember those to not confuse them expected then you have to calculate them you expect it's not real you know so where did i get those values then the expected values if you see there in the question they gave you the expected percentages not the actual values they gave you the percentages that in a given population you expect 26 percent to be bmw 20 percent to be mazda etc so here we surveyed 400 people so we can just find out how many do we expect of those 400 to prefer mazda to your etc right so we're going to calculate that so we're going to do 11 percent of 400 etc so for, for for toyota fe or f expected for toyota is just 43 percent of 400 we get 172 that's where that comes from you do the same for bmw uh fe or f expected for bmw 26 percent of that 104 and then you do the same from the master you get 80 you do the same for chevrolet you get 44. right so you fill in that table um, that's also a considerable amount of marks if you're answering this in a college in a college exam or in, an assignment this there's considerable marks in, in terms of following those steps now the next thing is uh we gotta use that formula again the formula we introduced which is the chi squared formula it says we have to sum up the observed minus expected value. So the difference between the observed and the expected, you have to square that and then divide by the expected. And then we have to sum up for each car type or each column. So let's do that. So the first column is the Toyota column. So each column we have an, a contribution to the x squared, the, the final x squared 10, because that symbol there, uh, that's the summation symbol. It tells you that um, you have to sum up all of those things. So each thing here, each column would have a contribution towards that. So the first column is the Toyota column. So we just follow the thing. Observed is 117 minus expected. It's 172 divided by expected 172. If you do that, um, we'll square the top. If you do that, you get 17.58. And then you do the next one again. Observed minus expected. That's 87 minus 104 divided by 104. Again, you square the top. And then, and then you uh, divide by 104, you get 2.78. You do the same for the other ones, and you get their contribution, right? So after you do that, then we just sum them up, as the equation tells us to do. So we just sum those up, we get the chi-square value, right? The 106.44. Okay, so that value, getting that value at this stage, you have about 75% of the marks. If it was a, an exam question or an assignment right you're not done yet you still you now have to interpret that value what does it mean that value like why did i just calculate that so that's the next part we get to remind ourselves we got a value of 106.44 what does it really mean so we look at the question again that's the question right there and uh that's our hypothesis there so that's it when you're doing hypothesis testing you see that you you pick one of those one of those is the answer Either H0 or H1 is the answer, like in terms of um, the result out of those experiments. It's either we're going to accept the idea that the proportions are actually 43%, 26%, or we're going to reject that. We're going to say that it's something else. They're not distributed that way, right? H0 is false. It's something else that we, we're not calculating right now, but they're not, it's not those proportions, right? So those are your two choices of answers. So you decide which one based on the maths, right? So here you have the chi-square table, right? So this table kind of helps you in deciding the answer, deciding which hypothesis are you going to take. So here you see that they asked us for a significant level of 0 0.1. So significant levels, they differ. You could have a significant level of 5% or 0 0.05, 10% or 0 0.1, etc. So this depends on how tight you want to be so here they told us that they want a significant level of 0 0.1 they always tell you what significant level to test this one so 0 0.1 so 
you go to the tables, they're available online uh, or in, in many formula tables, um, standard tables, and uh, you find the 0 0.1. So that's the 0 0.1 in the tables there. So now you have all that column with a bunch of numbers, right? So what, why are we looking for this number? We're looking for a critical value. So a value that we will compare with our value. Our value is 106.44. We want to find a value in the tables and then compare ours to that. So if our value is bigger than that value, then we reject the new hypothesis. If our value is smaller than that value, we accept the new hypothesis. Right, whatever we call the new hypothesis, we accept that. We, you know, right. So in this case, we know that our value is somewhere in that column, but which one? So to find that out, we use this DF. It means degrees of freedom. You want to find out how many degrees of freedom does your question have, so that you can find out what row to pick. Right, you decided your significant level is 0.1, so I know the column. But then what's the role so that I can find the value to compare my value, the 106, to, to that value, right? So degrees of freedom, there's this formula here. Degrees of freedom is equal to C minus 1. C is columns. So this is taken from a book, uh, standard formula. C is columns in your question. So this is my question to remind ourselves. We have four columns or four categories. Toyota, BMW, Master, Chevrolet. So you have four columns. So in our case, the degrees of freedom is four minus one. So we're going to hunt, which is three. We're going to hunt down three on that uh, degrees of freedom uh, column there. And we're going to find three there. So where they meet, that's our value. That's our critical value. So anything above that value, we reject the new hypothesis. Right. So our value is 106. Clearly, it's bigger than, much bigger than 6.25. So that means we're going to reject the more hypothesis. So again, if you're answering this in college, you have to kind of have all this information to get the marks of the different stages of the question. So the first the one stage is to hunt down that value in the tables that we have marks, the 6.25, and then to decide whether or not to, to reject or accept the new hypothesis. In this case, we reject because the value is higher. Our value, the 106, is higher, higher than the critical value in the tables. So reject that. And the last part of the question to actually finish it off is to interpret this in English, to actually say to someone who's not doing statistics, what does this mean, right? So there's always marks for that interpretation. This kind of just shows that you actually understand why you're doing this in the first place. You didn't just memorize how to do it. So why are you doing this? So you read the question again. The question was, is there enough evidence to suggest that the color preferences differ from the expected values from this yes there is enough evidence so the expected values are the 43 26 20 percent and 11 percent we are rejecting that we are rejecting the new hypothesis so that means they differ so that means that those are the expected values so they differ from the observed values because our value is much higher than that so we're going to reject the idea that Yes, the, the, we're going to reject the idea that, yes, the car proportions are distributed according to 43%, 26%, etc. So you would say that in English, in some ways, some, whatever words you use, um, but just saying something again as the new hypothesis in English. So you would say, yes, there is an, enough evidence to suggest that the color preferences differ from the expected proportions. Something like that. Um, the expected proportions, again, to remind you that the 43%, 26, etc. So you're pretty much saying that's not how it is in this group of people. Like in something else, people don't prefer it, these cars in that distribution. That's the end of the class.